so today we're talking about race conditions okay what race conditions basically do is when two conquer and this is thread one and this is thread two when two concurrent threads okay they're working simultaneously try to access the same resource okay they're racing to access the same resource so in these conditions what you do first is you can either change how will you exploit such a situation okay first you would want to do is you will uh, say this particular thread is accessing this and it has checked for the privilege that the current user has to access this whether it's a read or a write right and say this thread 2 does not check whether this particular uh, resource is accessible by the owner or the person who's running the command to uh, read or write at that stage what you do is you race it in such a way that this can actually affect this resource in a way such that this thread one that is checking the resource for its um, uh, usability or the way it can be accessed is beaten in the race okay so this is basically how race conditions work you are beating another particular thread that is not going to help you in uh, maliciously accessing a particular resource so what you do for such things is first you can change the privilege of the file in between the two threads and the second thing you can do is basically change the file only that you're going to access. So here is when you have access to change the privilege of the file is when you use this methods. Second is when you do not have access to change the particular file that you want. Okay, now this is your target file. But you cannot change this so in this case what you do is you create another file that you have access to and in between the two threads running you change this target uh, this uh, file that you have access to into this target file correct so how do you do this let's just go about this once in this case like I said, you will exploit things that you are changing, like you have access to change the rights to through some other uh, user. Now, in this case, uh, the best example I can think of is when you have the access function. What it does is it checks the uh, real user ID. Okay, so what happens is when the owner has the right permission, this check passes okay now if i am opening this that is your second process in this case what happens is in case of open it checks the effective user id effective user id can be defined uh, in that this thing by your set uid programs and stuff so this can be changed and what is basically happening is you are accessing opening it to maybe write or read or anything to basically change and update it this happens these two are happening at the same concurrent time what you do is there's this thing called talk tau that is your time of check to time of use let me write this because this is important In case of time of check to time of use, what you're doing is at a particular time when you are accessing the file, you probably just checked whether the particular person who is access, trying to access the file does have uh, the uh, permissions to access it or not. So in that case, you check the real, real UID and it passed. Now at the time of open okay it is not checking anymore so time of check is access and time of use is 
this so in between this time of check that is your one and this time of use what if i do either of this i change the privilege of the file or i change the file that i'm accessing itself so what talked out does is basically gives you a time interval it defines the time interval in which the race is happening talked out between the check and the use it gives you the time interval in which the race is actually happening okay so that is how you're doing this now how will you consider doing this so in between these two i am what i'm doing is now i do not have access to this target file i cannot write to this file actually so i'm creating this other file which i have access to because i have created it so my real uid clears or passes in this case so it checked at access it checked that my real uid is passing this thing but at the time of use what if in this interval i change this file to another target file which i do not have access to right so i am racing that in between these two processing times are fast execution times are fast right so i am racing that between this time i can change that is uh, something that i have access to but i cannot open okay i just change that entire file so basically in this interval i'm trying to change the created file with the target file that i have in mind how do you do this okay in target times there's something called as sim links okay symbolic this is basically your symbolic link what symbolic links does is that uh, it uh links a particular file with another so if you're doing something to this it will automatically go and get linked to this other file you okay, know how do symbolic links work okay i'll tell you the attack process how this goes you will unlink a file to something okay and then you will sim link the file to the file that you want and then that's your slash temp slash xyz this xyz file is basically the one that you created yourself okay and then you sleep for say some random time and then you unlink that symbolic link again and now sim link it to your file that you actually do not have access to okay you can't basically change unless like you're the main user or something now what you did is you sim linked this here to my file okay this my file is the one that you created the very next step what you do is you unlink it and sim link this file to etc password something or any other file which you basically want to target okay and what will happen is at the time of check okay at the time of check it is seeing that my file has access to it but at the time of use etc password you are not really checking it again so in this particular time you're sleeping for some time and you keep racing this with your uh, target process when you're doing this this gets changed like you can access this file open it to edit it basically okay why because at the time of check you had access but at the time of use there is not being rechecked again so you can actually access this file and edit it now what would you like to you know edit into this particular file like what can you possibly edit into this password file that is going to help you out you want to access it later right so you know how things are on the password file what do you want to append 
is basically something that you uh, will be able to access later so you can just create another uh, uh, like another record of another user so you're creating another root user with uh, this by the way I don't know how many you guys know that but this is your magic password value magic value hash this basically means that no password is required okay and then zero because that is your user id that you want to be root okay root ka user id is zero uid zero and then test and then slash root slash bin slash bash get it so this is your magic value that you're actually inserting into this uh, file because you'll be able to now open and edit it even if you do not have access to this particular file why because you have access to this file and the um, OS only checked if I have access to it and while opening it did not really check my uh, real user ID it only checked my effective user ID and that I could have set with uh, set UID itself so this is how this works Okay, for however uh, one of the countermeasures that Ubuntu has taken is that it does restrict whether a program can uh, follow a symbolic link so this sim links that I am uh, going through this change of sim link uh, has actually been restricted by Ubuntu now whether it can finally follow it or not uh, so what it does is it checks whether a follow uh, a fo the, the symbolic link is being followed in a world writable directory and you have to enable this uh, by there's this thing called protected sticky sim link uh, uh, sticky sim link uh, equal to one or zero accordingly you're switching it on or off when you want to for um for the other stuff uh for countermeasures on race conditions and stuff uh you can follow the next video that's on the description box